I'm, I'm going to give it to you, but I would like to frame this so that you can speak sure. Because I, I know that you have an extensive history uh, being uh, against against wars, right? And uh, most of the wars uh, that, I, that I, I saw that you were involved in were wars overseas, huh. wars that we have overseas. Yes, of course, race the war at home. Right, that's, that's, yeah. that's exactly where I was going with it, um, the war at home. Oh. 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 I just got shot. <laughs> I got so excited, I'm going to get to speak yeah. and boom! Oh my God. He, see, he, yeah, he, he can't bounces, wait to get at this okay. point. He bounces good. He bounces good. about what the Green Party can do to, in my opinion, improve its effectiveness in organizing in New Jersey <clears throat> around some of these issues. Now, I think that the party that's going to be successful in this country is the party that goes to the people and doesn't say, here's my platform, this is why you should vote for me. I think the party that's going to be successful in New Jersey and throughout the country is the party that organizes tirelessly, endlessly, about effectively to try to get some of these gains. And then, by the way, we have a party and we're running for election. But if you leave with, here's my, here's my uh, position, here's this and that, we, need, we, we are not gonna get support from people who are dying every single day until we start to meet the immediate needs of these communities the day-to-day -day struggles to survive. So, so um, I mean, the, the Green Party's got the right position on the issues, yes. but we need to figure out how do we organize and how do we um, move forward. Now, the, the Carcerate Garden State, when we first started, we had a, 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 a roving panel discussion, and, and we didn't just say, we didn't just go into communities and say, here, we know everything about mass incarceration, come to our meeting. That's not the right role to play. Um, the, the, the way my suggestion would be that if you're gonna pursue, like if you were gonna have uh, a campaign in New Jersey that really tried to put some seeds down in the most oppressed communities of New Jersey, which I think is the only way we're ever gonna win because the super oppressed are the only people capable of leading the kind of movement that we need to make the kind of changes that we need because the super oppressed know what the issues are and they know what the states are because, because if, if, these, if we don't win anything, they're dying. You know, I mean, climate change and war are very important issues and war has always been my main thing and it's a big issue, but, um, because we could end up blowing up the world, everyone dies, same thing, climate change, the whole world ends, but um, people are dying today and tomorrow from mass incarceration, uh, joblessness, uh, poverty, um, lack of uh, health care. Um, so, so the way to go about organizing, I, in my opinion, the, way we, the model that we followed is, we would try to first reach out and, and analyze what community you want to have a meeting in. What are the groups that are doing stuff there? What are the issues that are going on in that community? And, and you, try to, um, you try to reach out to those folks. You don't even set up that meeting until you have some people from that community on the ground involved in organizing the event. Um, and that you combine the issues of, for example, mass incarceration with what's going on in that community. Um, what are the, uh, uh, some local issues to connect it to? And then you make sure that that community is represented from, from the get-go. Where is the meeting going to be? Don't, just, don't go, you know, you come up with suggestions, but let the community decide. They know where people will come. Mm -hmm. um, our very first meeting was in front of City Hall. Our, we had a panel discussion in the streets. Um, and, and it was very widely uh, attended. And, and then we followed that. We, not all the events were in the streets, but that, you know, you can do it in the streets. You can do it in a park. You can do it in front of a, uh, where, where you have, uh, some random people join you, etc. And you can put a panel discussion together in the streets. Um, so so um, my recommendation would be, uh, as far as trying to build the uh, Green Party, like, um, and I want, I want to speak, we got Seth here, the next governor of New Jersey. Um, 
Now, now we, don't, we don't know that, that Murphy's saying pot's going to be legal as soon as uh, the Democrats get elected. But the cities in New Jersey are pretty much run by Democrats. New Jersey is one of 16 states that's actually increasing the number of people arrested for pot every year. 25,000 New Jersey people get arrested for pot. So why don't we say, why doesn't the Green Party say to the Democrats, hey, we want to work with you, and let's start by dismissing immediately a thousand charges against people facing charges for pot. Let's just dismiss the charges. All the Democratic-led cities, let's stop, let's de deprioritize Deprioritize cannabis immediately. Not, don't, let's not wait for the election. We can do this today. We can have a war in Congress today. And we can call upon the Democratic run cities to do that. Asbury Park has done something to this event. Not as far as they should go, but, but they have taken some steps in this direction. The rest of the state, the, the demand should be made. And we should say, look, we can do this now. You want to legalize Papo, but we want to, we, we need, we, we need, let, we need uh, the prosecutors when the police bring these arrests in is to throw them on the ground. No, I'm not prosecuting this. That's the, that has to start immediately. We, um, New Jersey has a 12 to 1 ratio of the likelihood of going to prison black versus white. Right. The worst in the nation, New Jersey, the worst in the nation, this is according to the sentencing project. Uh -huh. Now, this study came out a year or two ago, a year and a half ago. And did anyone in the office say, okay, we got this 12 to 1 study. Let's break it down. Let's go uh, county by county, courthouse by courthouse, police department by police department, and find out where is this discrepancy coming from. Now, it's not all because of individual racism. A lot of it's because of systemic issues, etc. cetera. But, um, and let's analyze who's in prison. Now, if, if you represent a city or a town, you should know everyone, right? And you should know who's in prison, too. And you should, and they, they're part of your constituency. Now, if you know that somebody's in prison and has a longer term sentence because some racial factors were applied somewhere along the way, shouldn't you want to find out and, and provide some sentencing relief? There was no politician that said, took this study and said, we need to have some immediate sentencing relief based on this uh, study. I think the Green Party can say that. We want some immediate sentencing relief based upon the 12 to 1 worst in the nation likelihood of ending in prison if you're black versus white in New Jersey. Uh, yeah. uh, I'd like to ask you a question. Sure. Uh, what that, what you're suggesting, and I'll take, we'll take questions in one minute on this subject after my Bob has an opportunity to speak on this subject. What you're saying uh, is almost fitting to the, the category of reform. Again, when we're talking about um, you know the people sentencing, but how do you what do you think about what is what is realistic about shutting a prison down? Well, well, basically, I'm an abolitionist, okay, uh, and let's hear about abolitionists. Incarceration is enslavement. This is about enslavement. The Thirteenth Amendment. We all know enslavement wasn't ended. Um, we need to fight for systemic change. We need to, we need, in the, in the back of our minds, we need to be revolutionaries. We need revolutionary change, okay? But that's never going to happen. It's never going to happen until, until we organize across the board. And you're not going to make any headway with super oppressed if you're not winning and surviving till tomorrow. Okay? So that's why you have to fight for reforms at the same time of keeping your revolutionary vision intact. So, because you don't win folks, I'm not saying that we should be, win folks off, it's not a good way to put it, but we, we are not going to or, organize and gain support unless we're surviving from today to tomorrow. And there's folks who don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And if we talk to them about, well, come the revolution, all these problems are going to go away. Well, the, People have been saying that for decades. I mean, I thought the revolution was coming at some of the marches I went to back in the 80s. But, you know, we're still, you know, waiting for that. Um, we can't wait for the revolution. We need to win immediate reforms, close those prisons, and, and then some. We, we need to set some goals, 50% uh, reduction um, of the prison population. The parole, we got to analyze the whole across the board who's in prison, who should be aging out of prison, who never should be going. What's that? Parole should be destroyed. These are people making over $100,000 a year. They're not hired, right? They're appointed by the governor. 
so they have no like checks and balances. Um, me personally, you know, I, I was incarcerated. Many people know my history. I was incarcerated for 23 straight years from 1993 to 2016. I have firsthand knowledge of the parole board. Um, I was somebody that didn't have any infractions for over a decade. And just because of the, the, the humongous sentence that I never should have received, that I did receive, thanks Bill Clinton, um, I would just receive an extra hit. I mean, they don't care. There's no accountability. There was no way to appeal it. I mean, the appeal process. So, I mean, when we talk about, you know, anything dealing with the parole board, they should be eliminated. Either you did your time and you're out or not. Yeah, what, what, I guess what I'm trying to say is that we need, we need to, the, 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 after the 12 to 1 report came out, what should have happened, this, we should analyze the entire population and figure out who should get out immediately. Who should have their uh, time, uh, uh, um, sentence um, to time serve released immediately? Who should have their sentences reduced? Who, who, who had a racial factor? And there needs to be some, there needs to be some, some that's, that, that's a, a, a tremendous thing to happen and, and, and there was not a peak. Right. I mean, there, there is a, there, right. yeah. So, so, so those kind of things. Okay. 